as I prepared this week, I worked on something, had this thought in my mind, worked and worked and worked, read, studied, prayed, then I read, and then I studied, and then I prayed. Friday night I got home and the Lord said, what are you working on that for? I said, because that's what I wanted to bring. He goes, is that what I want you to bring? Okay, so Friday night I wrote a sermon, (laughs) and it's titled, Are We Fruitful? And when we listen to the words that have come about this morning, and all the things that have been said, and the songs that have been sang, and, and things like that, it all brings to act in a way to prepare us to be fruitful. Amen? There's many things that look like the real thing, but they fail upon closer comparison. I'll prove my point. I have a fruit bowl. I know it don't look like a fruit bowl, but it is today. We have fruit. Pear. Who likes Fuji apples? Who likes uh, Granny Smith apples? I do. Put a little bit of peanut butter on them, man. Mm. Crunch really good. Naval oranges. Anybody like naval oranges? Lemons. Everybody like lemons? Man, look at that. Looks good, doesn't it? Good fruit. Good fruit. Good fruit. But I need somebody to examine this a little bit closer. Come up here. Pick up, pick up one of the apples. Tell me what you think. It's not real. It's not real. Thank you. Looks real. Upon first examination, it looks really real. Pick up the orange. It's not real. But it looks real. Phil? So what's the issue here? Looks real. Many things look real whenever you first look at them, but upon closer examination, they're not what they're supposed to be. Amen? Let's turn to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. We're going to see what happens about being fruitful. Matthew chapter 21, starting with verse 18. Now in the morning as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. Now, there's information that I've been told and read about fig trees. They're not like a regular fruit tree. A regular fruit tree will come into bloom. It'll produce leaves, and then it gets blossoms on it, and then it produces fruit. Not so with a fig tree. I've read that a fig tree... If it has leaves on it, it has fruit. So when Jesus, he knew that there should be fruit on this fig tree. Okay? Now, there had to be some preparation involved in this. Okay? Just like this bowl of fruit right here, if it was real, 
you, you can't just say, well, I think I want an apple, and go out in your yard and say, well, where's that apple tree? Oh, here, and, and pull an apple out of thin air. You have to plant the seed. You have to uh, nurture it, water it, prepare the soil around it, let it grow up, prune it, and then someday you'll have an apple, and you can go out and say, I want an apple. There's preparation involved in that. Yes. Amen? <clears throat> so we have to prepare to be fruitful. Okay? Let's scoot back into chapter 21. Let's go to the first verse of 21. We're going to read some information here and just trust me and follow with me, okay? Matthew 21, starting with verse 1. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied with her colt. Loose them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them with you. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and they brought the donkey and the colt and laid their clothes on them and set him on them. Now we know the story here of what was getting ready to take place. There was some preparation. Okay? He had to have a donkey to ride on to fulfill the prophecy. How did that donkey get there? What took place for that donkey to get to the spot where it needed to be so that when Jesus spoke those words and the disciples went and got it, there was preparation there? Just like what we've heard this morning. If we're going to be the church that we need to be, there has to be some preparation. Just like Tina said, two weeks. Prepare, okay? Continue reading with verse 8. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed crying out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Just like in our fruit, there was preparation. And there's activities that take place for that preparation. So as we prepare ourselves and as Jesus was preparing for what his situation was coming about, the activities there seem to be religious activities. Amen? You still following me? Seems like we're going off on a rabbit trail here, but we're, we'll, we'll get there, I promise. Okay? But these activities, that they, they seem to be good. Amen? Let's keep reading in verse 12. Then Jesus went into the temple of God, and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple, and overturned the tables of money changers, and the seats of those who sold doves. Now, in those times, you had to have a sacrifice. And isn't it good for there to be people there that you can buy a sacrifice for? So when you enter the temple? I mean, aren't these religious activities? Aren't these things that should take place in order for us to fulfill our, our duties that we need to? But is it fruitful? Okay. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Aha! Real fruit amongst the religious activities. 
But when the chief priest and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read? Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have perfected praise. Then he left them and went out of the city to Bethany and he lodged there. Now indignant, that's a word that, one of those words you, you think you know what it means, but you probably need to go look it up just to make sure. Because if I was to tell you indignant, well, they just were, they were distraught. They didn't like what he said. Indignant. Affected at once with anger and disdain. So when Jesus spoke these words, now these were the religious leaders, and all of a sudden, spot, and it made them angry. There's other words that people use these days to call that, but they, they were angry. Goliath was indignant at the challenge of David. Was he not? I mean, here's a, a man that's 10 to 12 feet tall, maybe a little taller, twice as wide as what I am, slender, slender at the waist and broad at the shoulders, and got a spear that most people can't even carry. And here's a little shepherd boy going to tell me he's going to cut my head off? Right. Right. We know the end of that story. Amen? I want to tell you a story of a mango tree. Okay? I'll tell you, we're going down every trail we can go down today. Okay? We're going to, we're going to get there, I promise. A gentleman rented an apartment. And... The landlord told him, said, um, just so you know, that's, that's a mango tree out there. It's never produced any fruit, but it's a mango tree. Well, this guy liked mangoes. And he got moved in, and the gardener came, and he was tending the lawn and things like that. And he says, um, you know anything about mango trees? He said, man, he said, I like mangoes. But he said, landlord said, that mango tree hadn't produced fruit yet. The gardener said, I can promise you, next year, it'll produce fruit if you'll let me do what I, what I need to do. It's not his tree. He said, sure, go right ahead. So he goes back in his apartment. Pretty soon he hears a chainsaw and he hears snippers and everything else. And he's thinking, man, what is this guy doing? He comes back outside and here's this mango tree. It's just a trunk and three or four branches. Everything else is gone. He's like, Wow. Hope I did right. Yeah. Next spring, this mango tree starts blossoming. The leaves come on it. The blooms come on it. And he goes out one day and looks at this mango tree. And here's mangoes all over this tree. Yeah. Wow. Turn to John chapter 15. Now I want you to remember the story of the mango tree and remember the preparation that takes place to produce even fruit. We'll call it that. John chapter 15 starting with verse 1. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Each branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone 
does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Remember the mango tree? It was a beautiful tree. Probably provided shade. But it was fruitless. God desires fruit. Not beautiful leaves and branches. And sometimes we have to be pruned. I really, 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 really like riding motorcycles. I can, I can ride a motorcycle in any weather and probably have shorts on when I'm doing it. My wife will have heated gear on back there going like this and I'm just grinning. That's how much I like riding motorcycles. But there come a time in my life where I needed to put that aside to usher myself closer to the Lord. Amen. And I had to be willing to do that. Now, did that motorcycle produce fruit? Depends on who you talk to. Okay? But when you use that item to propel you into a situation and you listen to people and they tell you their story and you can shed Christ with them? Did that motorcycle produce fruit? Now there's other people riding motorcycles. They got some rotten apples going on. Okay? But if a person can enter into that society and shed Christ, share Christ, they're the ones doing the talking. I want to be the one producing the fruit. And I can shed Christ in that situation. There's other things that um, everyone has them. For Butch, it may be drums. Do those drums produce fruit? Look right there. For Phil, it's cutting hair. And I've shared this with Phil. I said, you have a unique opportunity. You have all these people that come and sit in your chair, and what's the first thing he does? Puts his hands on their head, and he's snipping and clipping and talking, but in his spiritual mind, he's praying. He's lifting them people up. And then pretty soon, somebody will say, Phil, what, what is, what's so different about you? He said, i got Jesus in my heart. That, pro that produces fruit. Amen? Each one of us have a unique opportunity to produce. Each one of us has a unique opportunity to use the talents that the Lord give us to be fruitful. But what about fruitlessness? Remember, the Lord desires fruit, not branches and beautiful leaves. Just like the religious activity that was going on in a temple. It all looked religious, and it looked good, but it wasn't producing any fruit, and therefore Jesus had to empty the temple out so that he could produce the fruit that he needed to produce because people got healed. Psalm chapter 1, verse 3. And if you want to just read them off of the board, that's fine. I'll read them off of my paper here. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but they are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish. We cannot judge books by their cover. 
We cannot judge a person by their appearance. We cannot judge fruit by the way it looks. We have to have the fruit. We have to see the fruit of their lives. Do they lead people to Christ? Do they speak positive things out of the Word of God? Are they always negative? Well, they're such a good person. That's not going to get me into heaven, and it's not going to get you into heaven either. We know that the thing that's going to get us into heaven is what have we done with Christ? Have we asked Him into our own lives? There will be people that, well, Lord, I did this, and I did that, and I, I went to the jail and seen those people, and I give people food. I give people food. What good is it? Jeremiah 17, 7 through 10. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when the heat comes but its leaf will be green. It will not be anxious in the year of drought nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart of the deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, who can know it? The Lord searched the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. I mean, I give people fruit. Let's try it some more. Am I doing good things? I'm a good person. I give people fruit. Let's move on. Deuteronomy chapter 7. And he will love you and bless you and multiply you. And he will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land your grain and your new wine and your oil, the incense of your cattle and the offspring of your flock in the land which he swore to your fathers to give you. Now, the Lord just reminded me of a story. I have dogs. And I'm, I'm a dog lover. I, I am. Not that they produce anything in my life other than it doesn't matter what kind of day I have. When I come home, their tails are wagging and their ears are perked up and there's like, there's Chip. I mean, that's, that's what they do for me. Every morning, my dogs know exactly what time they're going to get fed. And they know that if they are good, no, they know they're going to get a treat. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have to be good. I mean, if you're a dog lover, you know this. But my, my mama dog, I'll get her a treat out. And I'll give it to her and she'll smell of it and then she'll look at me. And her tail's going like this. So I'll take the treat back and I'll reach down and pet her a little bit. And she's got that spot right behind her rib cage. And her tail starts going like this. And she just like, you know, then she'll take the treat. Now my other dog... You can throw it wherever. She, if, if my mama dog drops hers, the other one gets it. I mean, that's, that's just how it is. She don't care. So it's, it's, just a, it's not a fight. It's just one of them things. Okay? But I've read this verse that he will increase your cattle and the offspring of your flock. Now, both of my dogs are female. And they've both been fixed. Okay? Because I'm a responsible pet owner. Okay? And I walk in. Now, my, my wife says my dogs are spoiled. They have a, 
a chicken coop that they stay in and it's a concrete floor it's got straw in it it's got heat lamps their water bowl is heated so it won't ever freeze I mean they're, they're not spoiled they're just well taken care of they're blessed okay like we are as Christians we're blessed so I go down there one day and I open up the door of the chicken coop and I walk in there and I, something catches out of the corner of my eye and I'm like that is a big rat over there man so I'm just kind of you know maybe I didn't see it so I get their food and I turn around over there and I go that's a puppy now I got two female dogs both of them been fixed I look over here in the corner and here's a puppy that matches my mama dog and I said Lord you said you'd bless my flock I don't know about that because I, I have no there's no tracks in my yard <clears throat> the lady that feeds my dogs whenever I'm gone I went to work that morning. I said, you've been at my house, haven't you? She goes, what are you talking about? I said, there's another dog in my dog pen. She just started laughing. I said, you did it. She goes, no. She goes, I said, what color? She goes, I don't know. I mean, how does... Explain. You can't. Other than this scripture right here says that the offspring of your flock in the land which he swore to give your fathers, he'll increase you. That's the only way you can explain it. How else can two female dogs produce a puppy that's already got its eyes open and ready to eat? I had to go to town and buy dog food. Puppy chow. <laughs> no, uh, whatever you think, but I, it was in my pen. No tracks in my yard. Get out the security cameras and look. There's nobody there. I don't have security cameras, but, you know, that's just like, how, does, how do you explain that? You, you can't explain that. Okay, there's no way to explain it other than increase. Fruit. Not the fruit I desired. Fruit. Okay? Another another story. I had this apple tree in my yard, and I couldn't get it to produce fruit. I'd go out there and I'd trim some branches, you know, and I'd work the soil up around it, and I knew the soil was good. This tree just kept getting bigger and bigger and and, and just blossomed out like it's supposed to. Never, never any fruit. I'm like, golly. One day, you know, I said, Lord, at this tree, do I need to cut it down? So I let it grow another year. And I go out there one morning and I see these blossoms on it. And I'm thinking, oh, these blossoms turned into this little bitty fruit and this apple tree I don't like pears I cut it down I just I waited for 10 years to get an apple off of my apple tree and it wasn't even a fruit that I wanted I mean, how, do, how do these things happen? I mean, I prayed for increase. I didn't pray for apples. I prayed for increase. And I got the increase I wanted. But I wasn't specific enough in my increase to pray, to say, Lord, I'd like to have apples. I got fruit. Not that it wasn't bad. Some people like pears. I just, I, oh, Phil likes pears. There you go. Here, Pastor, you need an apple. Let's move on to Deuteronomy chapter 11, starting with verse 16. Take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them lest the Lord's anger be aroused against you, and he shut up the heavens so that there be no rain. And the land yield no produce. How can you be fruitful if you don't get rain? And you perish quickly from the good land which the Lord is giving you. Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart 
and in your soul and bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, speaking them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them, like the days of the heavens above the earth. One way that we can produce fruit is we can share with our children and our grandchildren about things that the Lord's done in our lives. And it can build in them a strength. Last week, my grandson was here, Noah. It's a nice name. When I went to Israel, and I have another grandson, Stetson. When we went to Israel... My favorite story in the Bible has been David and Goliath. And I got to go to the stream where David picked up stones and put them in his pouch and went and defeated Goliath. I picked up five stones for myself just that I have them because I've been there. I picked up five stones for Stetson and five stones for Noah. And when they get old enough, I can set them down and I can tell them the story of David and Goliath. And I said, here's your stones. Producing fruit in their lives by impelling into them the word of God and making it real to them and saying, Papa Chip went there. And where David got those stones out of there, I got these out of the same place. Let it be a representation to you of what God can do for you. Deuteronomy 28 verse 4. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, the increase of your herds, there's that dog again, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. See, if you're producing fruit, these things are going to take place. Remember, the Lord desires fruit, not branches and beautiful leaves. need to examine your own fruit what fruit do you have in your life that like riding motorcycles for me it was an enjoyment I could be having the worst day ever and get on my motorcycle and a half mile down the road I'm like just ride there were times when Tana would be on behind me and we'd get about a half mile from the house and I'd hear her go That's worth it to me right there. We can turn around and go home if we needed to. There's those things, those things that we enjoy. Can we make those fruit in our lives? Or will we be like the tree that Jesus had to curse because it didn't have any fruit on it? Are we going to be beautiful leaves and branches or are we going to produce fruit? Mark 11 Verse 20. Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Let's not be like the fig tree. fruitless to the point of not even being able to live anymore we want to produce fruit we want to have real fruit good fruit good fruit that you can eat Because this is what the Lord wants for us. For us to produce fruit. Not that old fake stuff. Man. There's just something about an orange. But there's also something about being in the will of God. 
and producing fruit. And he'll increase your fruit. Amen? Let's be fruitful. Thank you for the opportunity to teach. Thank you, Pastor. He kind of sprung this on me. Usually he gives me a month or so, you know. Sunday as I'm walking out the door, he says, Oh, yeah, you're going to be in the pulpit. And then he comes out of his office this morning and he says, um, I hear we've got a world-renowned preacher today. I said, Nope. Just an ordinary man that wants to be used by God. You want to be a world renowned preacher? Or you want to be an ordinary person that God uses to change the world? Everything that we've heard today will produce fruit in our lives. Let's let it produce that fruit. So that He'll say, I know them by their fruits. Amen? Amen.